Hey, I'm Kat, mom of three and founder of Ritual, the company setting a new standard in the supplement industry. When I was pregnant, I remember staring at my prenatal vitamins and thinking, what's in this stuff? All I found were vitamins high in heavy metals and lacking in the very essential nutrients we need. So we scoured the world for the best quality ingredients, backed by clinical studies, third-party tested, and Ritual's Essential Prenatal was born. Join our family of skeptics with 40% off your first month when you visit ritual.com slash podcast. This is Naked Pine. Naked Pine. M.I.P. With Masamela Matsumal. Mark Thompson. Naked Pine. Get woke. Folks, what a year 2020 has been. And it's been no less challenging for our students. We're happy to have back with us uh, our friend, who represents the union that I actually used to organize with and for uh, myself, and it was a member of the American Federation of Teachers. The president of AFT is here with us, Randy Weinegar. And Randy, bless you. Happy holidays. Hope your holidays are going safely. Um, so Joe Biden says he wants to reopen schools in the first 100 days. How are you feeling about that? Has he consulted with you all? Um, on that, and and does that make sense? Look, he has. Um, we've had several conversations with um, transition officials. We've done um, actually several hours of presentations with them, and so I think that they certainly have consulted with us. I think what by, what the president elect, I love saying that, um, has actually said is three really important things. One, we all want to reopen schools for um, students. We know that in-school learning is far better than remote education any way you cut it. And, you know, whether we're talking about, um, you know, what we need to do for kids, um, what we need to do to reopen the economy, how we get, you know, parents back to work. I mean, all of that stuff is really important for me it's more important in terms of what we do for kids, but all of that stuff is very important. So we all want to reopen schools for in-school learning. But number two, then you have to do what it takes to make that happen. And that means making sure that you learn from the science, which has changed a little bit since the beginning of COVID, um, and have the safeguards in place and the testing in place to make sure that you can do that. And that then requires number three, resources um, in order to deal with those um, safety safeguards and guardrails, but also number four, resources that actually meets the needs of kids. Mm -hmm. And so what is great about what the president-elect said was he set a goal for reopening the majority of schools Um, in his first 100 days, but he said it with two caveats, that we have to follow the public health safeguards, and number two, we need the resources. And so that's why in response to that, when he said that, I said, hallelujah. Uh, You know, ironically, if Donald Trump would have said that in um, July and August, instead of having a, you know, full cap tweet, we must reopen schools, you know, assuming that anyone was dispensable to his politics, kids and educators alike. Um, If he had said what Joe Biden just said, we would have had a really different fall because we would have gotten the HEROES Act resources and we would have had guidance out there instead of CDC watering things down and nobody trusting anybody on anything. Yeah, yeah. And and so at the moment, um, I, I think that um, uh, we've still been dealing with some with some crises in some of our largest systems in L.A. Um, um, here in New York. Um, it's it's been a lot because things have not gone as smoothly as they should have, even from the beginning. Correct. Um, that's why we've had some of the fits and starts, haven't we? Correct. And and frankly. 
you know, um, I mean, last April, months ago, it's now December, April 29th of this year, when New York was still in the midst of high first phase COVID, the AFT put out a report on how to reopen schools safely, not whether, but how. And just this month, I put out another blueprint on how we make sure we have a viable second semester and made a proposal for how to use the summer as a second, second semester. Yes, summer is going to have to be voluntary, but let's start planning now, not for um, learning loss, whatever that term means, but how do we actually create some excitement, some joy, outside learning, enrichment for kids so that there's something to look forward to and start planning for that as we know that we're getting the vaccine and we start planning for a summer of joy and enrichment and instruction and well-being. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and between then, between now and then, let's actually tackle the surge, wear a mask, tackle the surge, and then, you know, think about like what New York City is doing, which is with the testing that they're, they're having and the safeguards, we feel confident that you can reopen elementary schools for kids, you know, more profoundly on a more, you know, regular basis. And we feel confident that you can open schools for kids with special needs. Again, with the testing as early warning and the safeguards. And then ultimately, as the vaccine comes online, we start doing the same for um, middle school kids and we start doing the same for high school kids. High school kids are operating, unfortunately, like, you know, adults and like college kids. And that's part of the reason we saw a great deal of COVID positivity rates, even in New York City high schools. But for elementary school for middle school, once we tackle this surge, we think that those schools can be reopened more broadly, um, phasing out hybrid, um, but you have to have the safeguards and you have to have the testing. What have your members been saying about the the impact, the stopping, the starting, the opening and closing, and even the virtual? They're fed up. They're completely fed up, but they're fed up not with the kids. Obviously, they they're, they want to do whatever we can to help our students. They're fed up with all of the powers that be above them who pontificate all sorts of things of what should happen and have not helped them. And, and, and you know, this is a national, we're in a national pandemic. There should be. You know, it shouldn't be for the AFT to be the ones that says, this is the way you do this. It should have been the Secretary of Education, CDC, sitting down with us and making clear guidance based upon science and getting that resource. And then on on local levels all throughout the country, then figuring out, okay, this is how we roll up our sleeves and how we do it. Mm-hmm. It's been so ham-handed. And I, my members have been amazing. They really are trying and they're tr- and they're exhausted. So when they say that something like hybrid meaning to teach live stream and to teach in person at the same time, when they say that doesn't work, then it should be up to principals and superintendents and state chiefs and others to actually find the resources to make something else work as opposed to saying, well, just keep on trying it. And, and, and we're going to hold you accountable for it. So, mm-hmm. so my members, you know, they're, they're as anxious as everyone else about COVID. Are they going to get sick? Are, you know, their kids going to get sick? And we need to have more reasonable accommodations for people who are at risk or people whose families are at risk. But I, but they have been remarkable under this pressure, feeling the same anxieties, trying to engage kids, keep them safe. And keep them focused. Yeah, no, and and they have um, the, the teachers have been doing a lot, and that's always what teachers do anyway, making 
things happen when the resources are scarce. It would just be preferable, as you and I always talk about. This is the drum that Randy going to be Randy and I going to be beating. To <laughs> we got. If y'all ask teachers in the beginning, just you know, don't wait for us to show you. Ask the teachers in the beginning. Right. Randy laid out the blueprint. You all remember when this thing first happened. What's that's it, why is it rocket science to go to actual people in the classroom to right. figure out what is best? Because many of the people making the decisions, uh, especially in the Trump administration, had no classroom experience, weren't anywhere near a classroom. So this is very important. So, but the students, though, what are your teachers saying about how the students are coping? With, with well, everybody's having a hard time. Yeah. The social isolation has been terrible. And that's with the students who we have. Um, you know, when a student turns that camera off, it's really difficult. You need to have guidance counselors. We need to actually be able to reach out on a one-to-one -one basis. This is part of what's happening this year that makes it harder on some levels than last year. Last year, at least, last school year, and that's part of the reason why we said last year we should have, instead of the testing, we should have like capstone projects summing up the year. But remember, by March, we had had September, October, November, December, January, February. We had had a lot of months where we knew our kids. So by March, April, May, June, it's different. You are, you're, you're ending the year. This year, it's much harder because if you don't, have the relationships already, you know, it's just, it's no one wants to have one more day of a pandemic. No one wants to either be scared or isolated in the way they are. So we're going to need a lot of emotional and funding for social, emotional, really trying to help stabilize kids, pull out the resilience. It's going to be okay you know, and, and, and do that kind of real focus on well-being. And it means hiring a lot more guidance counselors and a lot more kind of met and, and really focused on mental health services, because there's going to be a lot of repair work that we have to do. Um, in addition to education, I would actually argue that the, um, the means towards um, dealing with recovery is to really meet kids' emotional needs um, first and foremost. And, 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 you know, if we can actually make sure the kids are all right, that we can go back to feeding them in schools, we can go back to having, you know, access, we have access to broadband and all this other stuff, but also really meeting their needs and their families' needs, then I think that um, it's going to be easier to make up whatever work that has been lost. And, you know, within a year or so, people I hope will look back and say, okay, we have all survived this century's pandemic and look, 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 look how strengthened we are by it. Yeah. Yeah. L lastly, Randy, before we go, um, there's the vaccine um, is I I'm wondering um, if we're talking about delivering the vaccine to as many people as necessary, including children, including students and young people. Um, are schools going to be an option for that, do you think? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, what we've said to people is let's align the vaccine with school opening, that teachers should not be, you know, health, that, that healthcare workers should be the first priority, not teachers teachers should be the second priority, meaning the, you know, 1B after healthcare workers and those in nursing homes, and that we should actually align vaccine prioritization and vaccinations with the reopening of schools. And we've made that case to the CDC. We've, you know, done, we've made it in various different forums. We've been saying this for months. All right. Um, Randy Weingarten, folks, American Federation of Teachers. We appreciate your work and, and all the great work all the teachers have been doing. Thank you, Randy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Give Sharon my love. Happy holidays. Okay. Thank you. You too. We'll talk soon. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Happy holidays. Take care. Thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain. 
Please remember to listen, like, subscribe. And wherever you get your podcasts, please give the show a five-star rating. And please do spread the word. Let's all continue to pray for each other during this pandemic and this police-demic. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been made plain. Hey, I'm Kat, mom of three and founder of Ritual, the company setting a new standard in the supplement industry. When I was pregnant with my first daughter, I remember staring at my prenatal vitamins and thinking, what's in this stuff? All I found were vitamins high in heavy metals, synthetic colorants, and lacking in the very essential nutrients we need. I believe women deserve to know what they are putting in their bodies and why. So at four months pregnant, I quit my job to reinvent the prenatal vitamin. We scoured the world for the best quality ingredients, backed by clinical studies and third-party tested for heavy metals and microbes. And this year, we were awarded the Purity Award from the Clean Label Project, the supplement safety certification that tests for 200 harmful chemicals and toxins. With Ritual, you'll know where your ingredients come from and why we use them. Join our family of skeptics with 40% off your first month when you visit ritual.com slash podcast.